Okay, so we're going to draft a um, button-up shirt that has a yoke, a collar and stand, um, front placket for the buttons, a sleeve with placket and cuff. Okay, so um, in this video, we're going to start by creating our... Um, uh, we're going to use a couple of working patterns, which we're going to create from the slim fit torso slopers, and we'll create the yoke. Okay, so let's go ahead and trace off a front and back sloper here. So I'm going to start by putting down a placement line, and this is the line that we'll be placing our sloper against to trace it off. Go. Let's go ahead and do our front sloper first and place center front right against that line. Like so. And we'll trace around the sloper. Mark all the notches. And all your balance lines on the body. Hip, waist, and chest. There we go. <clears throat> all right, we'll put this aside. lines. Here's my chest. And waist. And our hip. Okay, let's go ahead and do the back as well. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and extend this waistline across. up right there and I want to give myself a placement line line up my center back as well Center back with that placement line and our waistline with this balance line here and trace off our back. I like to keep the two patterns or slopers as even as possible, lining up as many lines as we can just so it's easier to see the changes we make to each of them and to keep track of them okay 
chest. All right, put this aside as well. Okay, so there's a couple things we're gonna do. Uh, the reason we're making these slopers is that way we can stay consistent, or excuse me, these working patterns, because we wanna stay consistent. For example, we'll only have one back. This will be cut and fold, all right? All right, center back right there. And here's our center front, okay? But we will have a left and right side to our front. Okay, so this will just help us keep stay consistent so we're not making the changes to the front two times. Okay, we're also going to remove some of the back for the yoke um, along with some of the front, and that way we're not going to keep redoing that and retracing that multiple times from our slopers. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to start. We'll start with the back since we're here. All right, so first thing we're going to do is at the intersection of our waist, waistline and side seam on the back panel, we're gonna measure in a quarter of an inch and mark that, okay? We're gonna, this is a pretty straight um, uh, side seam. We wanna give it a little bit of shape. So we're just gonna bring it in a quarter of an inch at side seam and we'll go back down to zero at the hip and then back to zero at intersection of side seam and waist. Right. And this is a pretty generic shirt. A lot of these things I'm doing, you could do more or less of. Okay, depending on the fit. All right here are my back armhole directional notches. And here's my ease notch, okay? I'm gonna have a back yoke on this that's gonna combine. We're gonna get rid of the shoulder seam and connect um, the sh back shoulder seam to the front shoulder seam. And so there'll be a yoke that stretches from back all the way to front, okay? So let's define where this back yoke is gonna be. Here's my center back, here's neckline and center back. I'm gonna measure down three inches there. So let's measure down three inches from Neck line and center back right there. And mark that, okay. And I think I'm gonna connect, create this yoke seam. I think I'll connect probably to my directional notch. Looks like it will blend pretty well. Let's see, let's take our curve ruler here. And I wanna make sure I don't end up with a point here. So this is squared out about half an inch. So we're just gonna blend into that half inch mark. That looks pretty good right there. All right. And just so we don't forget where this goes, let's add a couple notches. I'm gonna do two because this is the back, like so. And remind myself that this is center back, okay. I'm gonna remove this yoke um, in just a minute, so I'm gonna go ahead and true these lines. So intersection here of back, neck, I'm gonna square out for about half an inch. Here's my shoulder line, just true that. Okay, and then I'll use my uh, French curve to go ahead and true my neckline and that armhole. And let's do armhole while we're here. Again, I'm gonna remove this yoke in a minute. Before we do that, let's come back down here. 
to intersection of center back and hip. Again, we're gonna have a shirt tail. I'm just gonna drop this down an inch. You could do much further than that if you wanted. I'm actually gonna do, let's do an inch and a half. Okay, and then this is gonna blend right up to intersection of hip and side seam, so kind of like this. And again, we'll use our curved ruler to do that. Like so, okay. All right, let's go to our front. Okay, here's our center front. Again, here at intersection of waist and side seam, we're gonna measure in a quarter of an inch, like so. And let's go ahead and blend that back to intersection of side seam and armhole, back to zero. And same thing down here, intersection of hip and side seam, blend to zero there, okay. Here in the front, we're gonna extend this shirt also. And let's do that inch and a half as well. From our hip line. Okay, and again, that will blend in right here. And we'll just use our curve ruler to blend that in. Blend that a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna come up here and do um, create our yoke here at our shoulder. Okay, because remember we're gonna get rid of this center back, or sorry, this shoulder seam. We're gonna combine our front and back yokes. Okay, eliminating the shoulder seam. So let's measure down. So here's our shoulder seam in the front. Let's go ahead and true that real quick. Okay, and now let's measure down two inches from that seam, uh, right there. So we can just measure, use our ruler, measure down two inches. Looks good. And draw a line like that. So this will be removed. Eventually, let's go ahead and draw in a notch. And now let's go ahead and true armhole neckline. Square out and true the neckline. And let's go ahead and true our armhole as well. There we are. And we have our directional notches. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and start cutting some of this out. Let's start with our yoke. Here's my front yoke. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. And we'll put those aside. We're gonna do more with those in just a minute. Let's go ahead and cut out these working patterns first. So. All right, so there is our front working pattern and our back working pattern. And we've already removed the yolks from these. So let's put these aside. These will come back into play later on. All right, I'm gonna finish cutting out the back and front yoke and combine them into one. These together 
at the shoulder seam and it's easier to tape them together if there's a little bit of paper underneath to support it. All right, so here we go. Here's my front, here's my back, here's shoulder and shoulder. We're gonna go ahead and put these two shoulder lines together, line them right up. Armhole with armhole, neckline with neckline. There we go. Put a piece of tape here. And then I just put a piece of tape along the whole back. There's the working pattern basically for our yoke extending from front to back. Let's go ahead and make a pattern for that. Okay, so we want a full pattern for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a placement line. This will be our center back. Line up center back of this right here. And we'll go ahead and trace this off. Now this is white paper. It's not the best. This white dotted pattern paper is not the best for working patterns. Usually we like to use like the brown craft paper. We have to make the brown paper bags out of the grocery stores, that is much nicer. It's a little thicker, sturdier, easier to trace around. But this will do, and we'll just true it. Okay, let's also transfer our um, notches, we have two notches in the back, we'll transfer those two. Paper using our tracing wheel and this front notch. I also want a notch here at my neckline where shoulder seam used to be and an armhole where shoulder seam used to be. Okay, there we go. That aside, we can go ahead and perfect this now. Take that and our French curve. Okay, so here, this is a straight line. And then here at back, we extend that out about half an inch. And we'll blend this right in. Give ourselves a nice smooth line, like so. Armhole, we should be able to find a curve that matches that. And the back yoke. Right there, looks good. Let's not forget our notches. Let's add seam allowance all the way around this. We'll just do half inch. Thank you. 
and we're gonna do our fold outs, meaning uh, when we sew this yoke to the shirt, the seam allowance, we're gonna fold up into the yoke. So on the shoulder line, or not the shoulder line, but the front yoke, stitching line, I'm just gonna fold this back and I'm gonna transfer my stitching line through just for about three quarters of an inch. The neckline and at the shoulder, or armhole rather. And now my perforations here and here show me what that will look like when it's pressed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust those lines. So we have a nice clean finish. Everything lines up. Same thing here. This will all be folded up into the yoke. So let's go ahead, just that armhole. And that. I guess we don't need to do it center back, just that armhole. Transfer that through at the stitching line. And it stays exactly the same, so it's perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I want a full back piece for this. I'm gonna actually fold this at the center back line. I'll score it with my tracing wheel to make it nice and easy. If we perforate it, it makes folding it right on the center back line much easier. And now we can go ahead and cut it out. All right, before we unfold it, let's go ahead and transfer our notches through to the other side. center back. There we go. Okay. And this will be our grain line right here at center back. Okay. There's our back yoke, which came from this working pattern. All right. So, what we should have right now is you have your back yoke working pattern. If you're done with, you should have a back yoke pattern, which stretches into the front. And you should have a front working pattern and a back working pattern. Okay. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and start working on the front and we're going to add that front placket. Okay.